Alright, so let's work on the R code for how to do cross validation using the LUCV approach and the K-fold uh, cross validation approach. So let's start with the LUCV approach. We're gonna do this using the auto data set while we are trying to predict uh, MPG from horsepower or miles per gallon from horsepower. Uh, Again, I'm not gonna go over the data set. Uh, the data set you can find it in oh, and you can find it in library uh, called ISLR, which is the books library. And then um, we would like to, um, let's see, um, start by looking at the LUCV approach. Now, in, uh, as we said before, that instead of like splitting uh, randomly half half our da our data set randomly into half um, uh, training data and another half testing data the LUCV it will only look at uh, one observation as a testing data and the remaining would be our uh, training data and it will repeat the process uh, n times which is the number of observations that we uh, have so let's um, attach our data set which is called auto oh, auto all right and then we want to create a model call it let's call it linear model or let's just call it model mm, equals to we said that we're going to use a glm function to create a linear model because we are going to use a function called cv.glm that will do the cross validation for you before when you were fitting linear regression we were using the function lm it's still the same if we use glm generalized linear model but uh, which we used for logistic regression but here instead of uh, specifying the family at the you know as an argument it will it will automatically um, or by default it will think that this is linear regression so we want to predict miles per gallon from horsepower and from data auto so we are including the whole data set we're feeding the whole data set to the computer and we're not uh, we're not splitting it um, the split is uh, for validation is gonna be done automatically by the computer later on so now we have the model we used all of the data now in order to do the cross validation we are gonna use the function called cv.glm um, so we have let's call this um, MSE underscore a mean squared error from uh, LUCV um, that would be CV dot GLM and here the first thing that we are gonna give to this uh, function is the data set which is auto and the model that we created here in order to do the cross validation so all what we talked about the LUCV and this whole algorithm is just going to be done by uh, R in just this uh, line here cv.glm is not found because we need to use the library called boot this function could be found in library boot now if we run it we should be able to see what's our MSE. Oh, okay, so here actually it creates, you can see that there is uh, the C, Delta, and K, and remember that we talked about uh, Delta in class. In order to get the MSE, it's going to be under this uh, list here, Delta, and we chose the first one. We discussed the why, the why we have two here and why we are choosing the first one. We discussed this in class because there is different formulas. Um, yeah. And if you want to see these different formulas, actually, if you want to refer to the book, that's going to be formulas 5.1 and 5.2. Uh, so here we can get delta sub 1. That will give you the error. So this is the MSE for this particular model. Um, we talked in class that, you know, maybe uh, we would like to compare many models together. So uh, we did 
the for loop for this uh, for this purpose. And notice actually before before talking about the for loop, uh, if you directly want to get the MSE Lucy V without like doing this in two lines, you can actually have this dollar sign delta here, and that should do the job for you. If you don't want to write more lines, and then if you try to find what's the end. Okay, so here we fitted the uh, we fitted a linear mondo. Suppose that we want to compare many models, linear, quadratic, cubic, and so on. So in order to automate that, and so instead of like doing this, you know, let's say if you want to look uh, to compare up to polynomial number ten, that will take you know we have to copy this or we have to create the same code ten times. Instead of doing that, we can do iterations using a for loop uh, for i, which would be the counter in this case, i is in uh, 1 to 10, because uh, we want to repeat this process 10 times, um, we first want to create the model equal to glm uh, mpg. Now, in order to create, uh, to look at horse to power to the uh, to the power 1, to the power 2, to the power 3, and so on. We can use the poly function, polynomial function, and then horse power is the variable. Now we are specifying, so for example, if you want to have a polynomial of degree 2, then you just put, put 2. If degree 4, you put, put 4. But if you want to make it more um, um, general, uh, and since we want to do that for 10 times, Remember, r, the i is going to take values from 1 to 10. So we can, each iteration, it will take a different value. The first iteration will be 1, the second iteration will be 2, and so on, until it reaches 10. So we can put i here. And uh, so we gave it, um, we created the model, and then the data would be auto. Um, and then mse lucy v, that will be equal to cv dot glm auto model and then delta we would like to reach the first element now this is this is fine but if you look at this code after creating the model you're getting the error next now the next iteration you create the model you get the error and you save it in mse lucy v the next iteration the same thing but now like every time you're doing this uh, the previous MS, MSE Lucy V is being deleted or it is being overwritten. So to keep track of that, we can create a vector of MSE Lucy V, and I represents the index for each of the observations. Now, since we decided to create this as a vector, we have to define it before, and then um, you know we are gonna point to this. In, uh, uh, to, to this variable as null. Null means like there's nothing inside and then you can append to it as much as you want. So here we can run our code. Notice that it will take some time because first of all it's Lucy V and we're doing this 10 times. Later on when we do the K fault cross validation you'll see it will take less time and that's why we're gonna use K fault from, uh, from now on. Mm. I'm not sure, should I, maybe I should pause and then come back to this. Um, <laughs> Alright, awkward, awkward moments. Okay, I'm gonna pause. Okay, so I'm back now. Good thing I paused because it took some time, it took at least about one minute. Um, so now we have a vector of all of these errors and then if you want you can see what's inside this vector uh, we can see that a polynomial of degree 1 has it an MSE of 24 degree 2 19 better 19.33 this is 19.24 so it's the second model so far the best uh, according to this maybe we can look at uh, let's see one two three four five six um, so model model number six would be probably the best but again it depends how much you want um, flexibility in your model um, now let's try this with the k fold cross validation 
it's gonna actually be the same code very similar except we're gonna add one little thing so for the k-fault cross-validation now uh, at the beginning actually it would be a good pro a good uh, practice to set the seed of the random uh, number generator to a certain number so you can use it again uh, for um, later and we would get the same uh, result we talk also about we talked about the, uh, this in class as well um, let's also try the same process the same thing I'm gonna do the same thing we did here but using tenfold cross validation um, I'm gonna I'm gonna call let's do five hour uh, let's do tenfold cross validation so I'm gonna say MSE tenfold CV and MSE tenfold CV okay the same thing tenfold C CV now the only thing that we actually need to change or to add not to change is in this cv.glm function we're gonna add the value of k that we used k is capital letter here and the value of k if we're doing tenfold cross validation is 10 so now we are like dividing our data set into 10 parts one part is gonna be test and the other nine parts will be training I repeat the same process 10 times um, until um, now 10 it doesn't have to do with this 10 here that we have which could be 5 or whatever this uh, in, the, in this part um, so let's try to run this ooh, 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 ooh. oh we cannot this variable is bad we cannot use it's treating it as a minus sign right, I'm gonna use underscore 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 Now it should work and it should be faster. Here we go. It should be way faster than the UCV. Uh, if you want to compare actually the errors that we get from MSE UCV to the MSE tenfold, they are you know kind of like approximately the same. Um, it's not they are they are not very different. So they won't tell you like they are actually telling you the same thing that the second model is better than the first model and maybe the uh, you know here um, we almost have the same numbers so we can use 10 uh, fold cross validation because it would be faster and it's gonna give you the same um, MSE okay but remember the whole the whole idea behind doing 10 fold cross validation and UCV is to be able to use the whole data set without excluding any number or any observation uh, we like using all of these as a training data and using at the same time all of our data as a testing data okay well have a great weekend and I'll see you next week